Now, the members of the space station crew who arrived in July are getting ready to come home. In fact, there's been an activity called crew departure prep that has been on the schedule for Williams, Malenchenko, and Hoshide each day for more than a week now in advance of their scheduled departure on Sunday. What are they doing, and why does it take so long? Well, to find out, we're going to ask a man who just did the same thing a few months ago. Astronaut Dan Burbank, who served as flight engineer on Expedition 29 and commander of the International Space Station's Expedition 30 mission. He returned to Earth with his two Russian crewmates in April after 163 days on board the space station. Good morning. It's nice to see you again. It's good to be with you, Pat. Uh, 163 days in space began one year ago today with your uh, launch at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. And we put together a few scenes. Uh, tell us what we're seeing here as we uh, look at the events that took place a year ago today. Uh, okay, well, one of the first things you do uh, before launch is you head out to the, uh, the test facility near the launch pad, and you get suited up. It gives you a chance to, uh, to do some leak checks on the suits, make sure they're good to go. And uh, that takes place about three and a half hours before launch. And uh, uh, shortly thereafter, you head out to the pad, um, ideally in better weather you conditions. You don't, don't than always this. carry your couch on your back with you, though, do you? No, you don't. We had uh, these, these ponchos to keep the snow off the suits uh, for fear that the snow would then melt and we get moisture in the cabin. But, but then we uh, walked out to the, uh, to the vehicle. It's all fueled and ready to go and uh, very cold, uh, almost blizzard conditions there. When you couple the snow with um, you know, the cryogenic fuel-induced fog that, uh, that's swirling around the rocket, uh, the visibility was pretty low as we, as, we got to the, uh, as we got to the base of the stairs. You board the rocket, and a couple hours later, you're headed uphill. And uh, thankfully, uh, that weather is uh, no concern within about 30 or 40 seconds after launch. It's uh, long, you're uh, over long it. ago far behind you. That's right. And there you are in, uh, in your seat in the Soyuz. Yeah, it's a, it's a great ride. The, the thrust profile is very similar to what a, a space shuttle is. Um, it's actually a little bit smoother on the f in, uh, first stage. Um, and in about eight and a half minutes, you're in weightlessness, and as you'll be for the next uh, nearly six months. Uh, in your case, as we said, 163 days when uh, you and uh, Shkaparov and Ivanishin return home. At what point in there do you really start to pay attention to ending the mission, to getting ready to come home? Uh, I guess one way to put it is uh, only when absolutely necessary. It's something you kind of, uh, uh, you don't want to think about too much because you know you're really going to miss uh, miss the place. Uh, space stations is, is spectacular. Getting to live in weightlessness and enjoy the views of uh, the Earth that you get from there, um, it's something you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. You don't want it to end. Uh, by the same token, you very much want to see your family and your friends again. So uh, so there's it's a very bittersweet moment. Um, but we spend about probably um, bits and pieces of time, as you alluded to, for uh, for every day for about two weeks leading up to the undock. And that's generally how, how long it takes to get the vehicle ready and to get everything packed and, and get yourself in the right mindset to come home. What are you packing? What are you bringing home with you? Well, the things that you can actually carry in the Soyuz are kind of limited. The volume is limited. Um, we, we can actually carry about a, a, a kilogram and a half, uh, a couple of pounds worth of um, personal items that you carried with you on the way uphill. Uh, might be a journal, might be uh, you know some pictures of family and friends, things like that. But it's a very small package, too. It's limited that way. But the things that are most precious for the Soyuz that we bring back every time is the science. A lot of the human research that we do on, on board station involves taking blood samples, urine samples, other kinds of things that we collect and package. And that gets stowed very late. That's one, some, some of the last things that come down with us. So, uh, But there is a, a phased uh, packing of the Soyuz for all of the science uh, equipment, the hardware equipment, and then, of course, your personal items as well. It takes place over several days. Do, does all of your stuff come home with you? Does some of it come later? Yeah, actually, you know, I say we have a, a kilogram and a half that we can have which of our own personal small. items, which is really small. It's a, you know, it's a, a business envelope, you know, maybe a, a fairly thick one, but, uh, but it's uh, not a lot of items. Um, those are the things that went, rode up with you uphill, and those are the things that they're going to come back with you. You also can bring back about a large shoebox size worth of volume of other things, maybe a couple of crew shirts um, and, uh, you know, other things you might have on board that, uh, that uh, you brought up with you, those items will come down on a Dragon cargo vehicle. So we do have the ability, each crew member can bring a, you know, a small package of things back with them that way, and it'll come back sometime after you, after you get back. Is your stuff still waiting for a ride home? 
Actually, all of my all of my gear came back uh, safe and sound, and uh, you know, again, it wasn't a lot of uh, equipment, but uh, but there's a lot of a lot of good memories in in those few things. How much of the time is involved with the actual preparation of the Soyuz spacecraft? And that probably starts, um, well, there's a few checks we do uh, leading up to the undock, you know, even some of them where we do fit checks to make sure that uh, the seat still fits us. Um, uh, you know, each of the seats are molded for each of the individual crew members, but we do periodic fit checks of that throughout the mission. And there's some other, uh, you know, simpler checks that we do, but um, about a week or so beforehand, we'll do a more more or less a full up check out of the, the Soyuz equipment and, and systems to include a, uh, a suited leak check where we actually are going to essentially do a dry run all the way up to the point of uh, pressurizing and leak checking the suits, and and uh, yeah, that again about a, the the week or so leading up to uh, to undock. So you know the system, so your systems are good, and then when you're done with those kind of checks, you'll back out of those and prepare the various volumes that are available for stowage of uh, payload hardware and things like that. And then the commander and the board engineer will spend uh, you know chunks of time over that next week getting all the things stowed just as they need to be, so they'll be able to make a safe entry. So they they do spend. They they have more responsibility in this checkout. They do, they do. Although you know the the responsibility is shared. I think you know the the Soyuz commander obviously is is prime for all of that. Um, I think the U.S. segment lead, um, in this case, you know Sonny, who's also the board engineer, is going to be involved as well because a lot of the a lot of the payload, uh, life sciences samples, things like that, are kind of fall under her purview to prepare those, um, and then when they get handed over and, and stowed, uh, that's really the responsibility of Yuri. So it's kind of a shared responsibility, but but uh, everybody to some degree has some involvement, but the two of them have the primary responsibility of it. When you get near the end, do you have some of this prep time devoted to r concluding, wrapping up any of the science experiments? A lot of the science continues, and it, it's handed over from one expedition okay. to another, so there's not major closeout of science. The only exception to that would be the science that's dedicated to you and your human research uh, investigations that you might have had. So there'll be some last minute, you know, blood samples and things like that that we'll collect shortly before the undock. And those things would be for Sunny, for Aki, and, and for Yuri as well. So but you're picking up new work. You are. You're picking up a little bit new new work, although there's still a phased handover because, you know, the, the crew that's going to stay up there, you know, Kevin Ford and, uh, and uh, Yevgeny Torelkin and Oleg Novitsky, they're Although we have the change of command set for Saturday, there is this phased gradual handover where the routine operations of the space station is gradually shifted to them to afford Yuri and Aki and Sunny the, the free time to be able to get things prepped. So it, it, it's not quite as abrupt as it would be, as it would appear during the change of command ceremony itself. We mentioned that there is a, a line in the schedule that says crew prep time, and it's in, a, in a, like an hour or an hour and a half chunks or something. Is that is that part of the reason it takes quite a, so long? Well, well, it actually has to be like that because there's a lot of things that you're doing. Some of the, the prep things are, are basically, you know, packing your things, many of which you're going to need right up to you, to you actually, um, you know, get into the vehicle. So some things you're gradually packing up things, stowing them. Maybe some things will return on drag, and maybe some things will actually uh, get transferred to trash. You know, there's, a, you know, the exercise equipment, the harnesses, the, the running shoes, uh, those kinds of things. They're not going to be handed over from one crew to another. So, so Sonny and Aki have to close out their crew quarters, their, you know, their, their, their staterooms, if you will, mm -hmm. on station, and gradually get their things packed up. They're also going to be collecting up all of their personal data, so their email files, their journals that they might be, might have been, uh, you know, collecting on board. A lot of their um, the imagery that, that they've been taken to to kind of get all that prepped and uh, downlinked to the ground, so it's available to them when they get back here for debriefs and other things like that. I wonder if, if there's there any psychological aspect to this. Do you have to get in the right frame of mind to think? Okay, I'm leaving now. Yeah, you you really do. I mean, this has been your home for six months, and uh, and it's a, a home like no other. And and it's uh, it's a very difficult place to leave. Like I say, you're the, you know the great thing you have to look forward to is seeing your family again. But but to you know this has been your total focus. It's a it's a magical place you live and work in. Um, but uh, but and it's been a wonderful chapter of your life. But uh, but it does take. It does take some adjustment. It's a major move. You know, all, all of the things that you've interacted with every day on a daily basis, all the science you've done, uh, everything, how you do everything your entire day is very different how you do it on board a space station as opposed to being down here. And you're, you're doing a move as big a, and as elaborate as any move you would from one house to another down here on planet Earth, but, uh, but greatly complicated beyond that by virtue of the fact that 
uh, you've been living in space and things are very unique about being there. But the mindset part of it is, is another thing. You, you need to spend a little bit of time, and it's hard to do because it's very busy in the last couple of weeks, looking out the window, internalizing, writing to your personal hard drive, if you will, um, those experiences because uh, pretty soon they're going to be behind you. Right now, Sunny Williams is in the same position that you were in. Uh, she's going through all of that just as a crew member who's returning, but she's also getting ready to hand over her command of this vehicle to somebody else. What What is going through your mind in, in that regard? Well, I think the most important thing is that, that you want to do it well. Um, in this case, um, Kevin has not had as much time as we would prefer to do the handover. It's because of uh, vehicle launch sequences and things like that. And when you have a delay, like we did, for example, with uh, Expedition 29 to 30, um, the expectation is you'll have a minimum of about two months to hand over with the previous crew, and in some cases, as much as four months to hand over. And in our case, uh, you know, Mike Fossum had about four days to teach me the things <laughs> I needed to do to be able to, you know, take over as commander. So it's a very bu busy time. You spend as much time, as, uh, you know, that if you get shorted on time, you spend as much opportunity as possible uh, by video downlinks and, and spending time before launch to learn the things that you can. But I'm sure it has been very much a high bandwidth exchange of data from Sonny to Kevin to make sure that he understands everything he needs to understand about the, the space station. All the things we can do in simulators and, and the other kinds of training environments we have on the ground only go so far. It's not the same as being there. Yeah. And this is a magnificent nearly million pound you know, tall ship in space, and, and it is learning the ropes on that ship is a, is a non-trivial thing. So they've spent a lot of time doing that, and uh, that's been the primary focus. By the same token as Sonny and Kevin been handing over, Yuri's been handing over to Oleg and, and uh, Yevgeny, uh, both of them first-time flyers, and, right. uh, and so it's a, big, it's a big transition. The other thing that Sonny is doing that you did is getting ready to come home in a Soyuz for the first time ever. Uh, what's that ride like? It's uh, it's very different than a space shuttle ride. Yeah. I'll tell you that. But it's uh, but it's exciting and fun in its own right. Um, it's a it's a really busy time. It's you know obviously as dynamic and as uh, as uh, potentially challenging as any launch would be. Um, but uh, they're going to be in the vehicle a couple of hours before undock, and the undock will take place about three and a half hours before the landing itself. Um, you have already had an opportunity to get back in the suit, to fit check the seats, to operate the equipment, and to get back into the mode of, of uh, operating this vehicle that you really haven't flown in for, you know, in this case, four plus months, I guess. And um, and so you've and you've also spent a lot of time working with the ground, working with your Soyuz instructors and the flight control team in Moscow to walk through all the various critical act activities you got to do. But once you get into the Soyuz, it suddenly strikes you that this is it. Okay, <laughs> you're, you're saying goodbye to your friends. You're saying goodbye to this wonderful place you've been in, and uh, you're going to be there's there's some initial preps you got to do to get the the hatches closed and do some leak checks, and then it's a it's a you have about an hour or so of uh, relatively slow-paced time to gradually get into your suit and get get settled into the vehicle. And then once you do the undocking, things happen fairly quickly. And still, it's three and a half hours before landing, but there's an awful lot of very important dynamic things that take place in that time. And uh, as you undock, the hooks open as you undock and you get that last view through the periscope of the Soyuz and uh, of the, the station, you know, dwindling in size out the window. It... Uh, you know, that's another thing you have to write to your hard drive again. But, mm -hmm. but you uh, very gradually and uh, and carefully back away from the station, and uh, the Soyuz will be in free flight for for uh, for a bit. And about uh, an hour before landing, a deorbit burn will take place, and uh, that's just enough to slow you down to the point where the Soyuz will gradually um, intercept the upper reaches of the Earth's atmosphere, and then the friction will slow you slow you down. Um, about 30 minutes after the deorbit burn, we have separation where the three pieces of the Soyuz, the descent module, which I think you see in this view here, uh, which is the only portion of the Soyuz with a heat shield, uh, and that's where the crew is, uh, separates from the other two modules. And um, we uh, it's a very interesting ride, very exciting, very, um, you know, it's a G's pickup. You can see the... Um, um, the plasma and the chunks of uh, heat shield that are, you know, flaming heat shield that are going by the window right Very by your shoulder. Sight. It is, yeah. it is, but it's doing its job. And uh, and then we uh, the parachute opens, and the parachute opening is a very, very dynamic, very provocative from a vestibular standpoint kind of an event. <laughs> and uh, you, 
it's a you have about 11 minutes after that, I guess. And after the parachute's open and kind of in quick succession, there's a number of things happen. The heat shield is jettisoned, the seats cock, and that is they extend on their shock absorber, if you will, in an upward position to give you some more uh, energy uh, dissipation capability at landing. And uh, and the the heat of the plasma of reentry has charred over a protective cover over the window. So at some point when things got really hot, suddenly that was all black uh, and you couldn't see out the windows. And then when the heat shield is jettisoned, suddenly the windows are open. That that protective cover, that you know ablative cover, if you will, basically falls falls free. And then you're just within a couple of minutes of landing and riding the parachute down. And then the landing itself is very very uh, impressive. You know, it's a the, the G impulse is pretty high. We've got soft landing jets at the very last little bit. Um, and then within a couple of minutes, before you know it, um, your friends, the folks that uh, many of which uh, help train you in the Soyuz getting ready to go and, and in some cases help strap you in, the hatch, is, hatch opens and you're seeing their smiling faces and, uh, and you know you're within, uh, certainly within a day or less of seeing your family again. We talk a lot about the countermeasures that you do every day on orbit to help you uh, for when you do come home. How was your re-adaptation to uh, Earth's gravity? I, I think we do a really good job on station right now. I think with the uh, the ARED, Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, and T2, and, and of course, Cevis and Tevis, and the other you know devices we have, um, crews are coming back in as good shape as they left in many respects. We lose a little bit of cardiovascular deconditioning. For me, it took a couple of weeks to get back into running, so I felt like I had the same amount of capacity as before I left. Um, but strength-wise, I think right at the get-go, I felt stronger after six months on station for a long-duration mission than I did in many respects after a two-week shuttle mission. Shuttle missions, you're so busy, so focused, there's not a lot of time to exercise, certainly to the degree that you do on station. Um, but I felt actually amazingly well. And we spent about 45 minutes, 45 days, excuse me, gradually, you know, increasing our workload and strength training and other kinds of things. And, uh, and before you know it, you're, you know, in better shape by far than before you left. What have you been working on since the 45 days ended and you're feeling yourself again? Well, uh, we get about six months to do various things. Some of it's debrief, some of it's physical reconditioning. Some of it is also the opportunity to go and talk to uh, do uh, public affairs events where we can actually go to schools and you know talk about the, the mission and things like that. So that six month is, is done for me and I'm back in uh, the astronaut office working currently with uh, EVA, uh, which is the spacewalking branch under, uh, under uh, uh, the, the chief of the astronaut office. So um, doing a lot of things that are, that are an awful lot of fun and something I really love to do. Champ, I appreciate uh, you're taking taking a few minutes to uh, help us understand what Sonny's doing right now. Well, welcome home. Well, thanks for having thanks. me. It was great to be here. Astronaut Dan Burbank, the commander of the International Space Station's Expedition 30.